Hello, I'm Atuba George and I'm so blessed today to be bringing God's truth to you. Now, this broadcast is for your edification, it's to build you up, it's to help you. And I keep telling you this, the attitude you display when the word of God comes to you is what is going to determine if the spirit of prophecy is going to rest on you. Everything you've got to do in life, you need the spirit of prophecy resting on you. But before going to today's broadcast, I'd like us to believe God right now for our daily bread. Are you ready? I told you it's your attitude. So put on the right attitude of faith, declaring these words and knowing that it will come to pass. Say this with me, say, Father, I believe and I receive my daily bread right now. In Jesus' name, amen. Now listen, you just prayed a prayer. Now this is how the attitude of faith works. You step into your day, there's a challenge, and you're wondering what to do. Remember this prayer that you prayed. Lord, I ask for my daily bread today. It may be health issues. Maybe along the line, your head starts hitting and banging. Like, oh God. Lord, but, but Lord, I ask for my daily bread today. I receive it right now in the name of the Lord Jesus. I'm telling you that headache will go. It will go. Maybe there's a financial challenge that shows up that day. And you don't just go, oh, what am I going to do? You, you keep your mind, Father. I received my daily bread today. So this thing ought to have been taken care of. I received this need man right now in the name of Jesus. Now, what's that? That's the attitude of faith. Before you start running helter skelter and looking for how to help yourself, sit down and say, no, Lord, this shouldn't be so. Why? Because I prayed this morning and I received my daily bread today. So this is part of today's daily bread. This is part of the bread that ought to have been met today. So, so I, I receive the supply for this right now. If it's favor you need, it's part of it. He said, he fills your mouth with good things. He crowns you with loving kindness and tender mercy. It means on a daily basis, you are supposed to experience loving kindness. You are supposed to experience that thing in your life that shows that God loves you. Praise God. Turn your Bibles with me to Hebrews chapter 10. We're talking about Jesus, something about Jesus here. And we, we got into talking about the book of life. And, and we, we just went into many things. <laughs> Praise God by the Spirit of God. So now let's go into that which the Lord is laying in my heart to share with you. And I trust that we will just follow the Spirit of God any direction He moves but trust me he moves us in the right direction <laughs> praise god now he says in verse 7 then lo i i then said i lo hebrews chapter 10 and verse 7 lo i come in the volume of the book it is written of me to do thy will o lord so i was telling you god has already written concerning you now all those things he has written concerning you must be fulfilled. Every one word must be fulfilled. Jesus said in Luke 5, 18, every jot or tittle of the law will be fulfilled. He said it. I did not come to destroy. Maybe we should go there. You know, see it, see it for yourself. We read it sometime last week, but I wanted to see it again. See it again. Praise God. The more you see it, the more it becomes real to you. Thank you, Holy Spirit. Verse 17, Matthew 5, 17 says, Think not that I am come to destroy the law of the prophet. I am not come to destroy, but to fulfill. See, why? Because every prophet spoke concerning him. Every word spoke concerning him. Now, he, he is here 
and to fulfill it. But let me tell you the bigger truth. They didn't just speak about Jesus. They spoke about you also. See, eh? Where did the Bible speak about me? Isaiah spoke about you. It says, when he make his soul an offering for sin, he shall see his seed. They shall prolong his days. Oh, glory, glory. You need to see that, praise God. Yeah, 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 yeah. You need to see it. Isaiah chapter 53. Oh, bam, brinege de fracata lem, bronga di shikete bling, ne bradi shikete me. Mmm, mmm, de branusi agaba. Isaiah 53 and verse 10. Look at this now. Maru sege barandia. There are scriptures you read and it just sends bubbles inside of you, praise God, like I feel right now. Look at this now. It says, Yet it pleased the Lord to bruise him. Talking about Jesus. Now, this was speaking in prophecy. It hasn't happened yet. So Isaiah was speaking of what is going to happen later on. Now he says, Yet it pleased the Lord to bruise him. He had put him to grief. Watch this now. When thou shalt make his soul an offering for sin, he shall see his seed. He shall prolong his days and the pleasure of the Lord shall prosper in his hand. What's that saying? When God made, made the soul, one of the motivations, now you read there that it pleased the Lord to have bruised Jesus. So who bruised him? Not the soldiers. The Lord did. But then he says the thing that is going to motivate God to do that is this. He will look beyond Jesus and see his seed. Now, that seed is the same seed that God was talking to Abraham about. In your seed, all the families of the earth will be blessed. And now God found himself in this situation where that word has to come to pass. So for that word to come to pass now, I've got to lay this one as an offering. I've got to let Jesus say, except a corner of wheat uh, die, fall to the ground and dies, it abides alone. But when it dies, it produces more fruit. Okay? So now the father wanted more fruits. So he decided to plant this one that he has. For God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son. So he planted him and crushed him. When he was crushing him, the motivation was me. The motivation was you. It says, when he made, when, and when thou has, when thou shalt make his soul an offering for sin, he shall see his seed. Even Jesus endured that cross because of you. He, he, it was painful, but he was thinking, this is what's going to pave the way for Atubo to come and fulfill that thing which is written concerning him. This is what's going to pave the way for David, for Josiah, for Emeka, for Andrew, this is what's going to pave the way for Ali. Are you hearing? For Chinye. For Dokas. This is what's going to pave the way for Mary. See that now? For Titi. He was looking. Titi is going to prolong my days. Susan is going to prolong my days. Why? Because they will hear of what I have done. And they will believe. And the spirit of prophecy will come upon them. And they will rise up like I'm doing right now. And begin to fulfill that good thing that we have sent concerning them. Listen to me. So it's not only Jesus that it is written concerning him. Everything that is written must be fulfilled. So I ask you the question, where are you in all this? 
The sacrifice has been paid. The requirement has been met. There is nothing holding you. I spoke to you the other day. Was it yesterday now or Wednesday? I spoke to you, I think on Wednesday. I think on Tuesday or so. I said, your sin, the, the mistakes you make, the errors you commit, is not strong enough to drive God away from you. He seeks that you repent. Yes. He seeks that you walk in the light. Yes. You know why? Because he wants all of it for you. He wants you to be qualified to enter into that inheritance. That's the best he has prepared for you. But you see, nothing today holds you back. The only thing that will hold you back is you. The only thing that will stop you from fulfilling God's purpose for your life is you. The only thing that will stop you being you fulfilling prophecy is you. Your attitude. Your attitude. You see that, uh, I don't think God will ever use me. You say, why? Because I've made terrible mistakes. It's not God speaking. You are the one speaking. And when you speak like that, you deny the Lord himself. You deny his power by your that's what you do. You're denying the ability of that power to walk in. You know what that power did? Oh, I love this. Ephesians. Thank you, Holy Spirit. You know, you're just breaking these things up in my spirit right now. And it's so beautiful. It's so beautiful. Ephesians chapter 1. Nebon renegisiki pa. Parate ketabarush. Oh, magabu vrede here. Ephesians chapter 1 and verse 17. Now, now, the beginning of this month, the Lord spoke to us and said, Look, every midnight, this must be your meditation. Every midnight, this must be your meditation. What? What am I about to read to you? And please take this seriously. Listen, uh, there is a lot God wants to do in our lives. Stop struggling. You are struggling for nothing. See, you think you have your brain intact, so you know what you're supposed to do. Can you release all that plans and that smartness of your brain? Can you just simply release it to the Lord and believe Him? Look at this now. He says that the, the God of our Lord Jesus Christ, the Father of glory, may give unto you the spirit of wisdom and revelation in the knowledge of you need the spirit of wisdom from God to know Jesus. All right. Then. It says, The eyes of your understanding being enlightened, that ye may know what is the hope of his calling. Why did God call you? He wants you to know. Why is he calling you to live this kind of life you're living? He, he wants you to know. And guess what he says? And what is the riches of the glory of his inheritance in the saints? What are all those good things that have been written concerning you? That's why we call for that daily bread on a daily basis. There are good things written concerning you. There is the glory of his inheritance in the saints. And what, look at verse 19 now. And what is the exceeding greatness of his power to us word who believe? Ah, do you know? Hmm, 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 hmm. He says that you will know the exceeding greatness of his power towards me that I believe. The exceeding greatness of his power. That I will know it. That I will know it. How? By God giving me the spirit of wisdom and revelation. That I will know. That I will know. No man can explain these things to you. No man, no man, no man is intelligent enough to explain it properly. I'm telling you, only the Holy Ghost can enlighten the eyes of your understanding. Only Him can minister this truth in your heart and you will understand it perfectly. He says, he says, he says that the, you will know the exceeding greatness of His power towards you. The exceeding greatness of His power that is directed towards you. Who believe? And then he, he lets us have an idea. He said, according to the working of his mighty power, which he wrought in Christ when he raised him from the 
death and set him at his own right hand in the heavenly places far above all principalities and powers and might and dominion and every name that is named not only in this world but also in that which is to come and had put all things under his feet and gave him to be the head over all things to the church which is his body the fullness of him that filleth all in all and my time is up today praise god wow let's think go meditate on this scripture i just read to you especially that verse 19 from verse 19 that you will know the exceeding greatness of his power directed towards you who have believed him that you will know I'll pick up from here tomorrow because because we, we need to dissect this. Thank you, Holy Spirit. I, I pray indeed today the eyes of your understanding is flooded with lights. Your spiritual senses are coming alive and you begin to reason by it in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. God bless you. I'll see you tomorrow.